What's going on, everybody? It is Friday, April 27th. We've got a monstrous MLB slate tonight. 14 games. Everybody but uh, the Cubs and whoever the hell the Cubs play at 2 o'clock. Um, if you missed me last night in the live stream, you got a better experience with my co-host, Jake Hari. Jake, what's going on? I don't know about a better experience. We did not have the right picks. At least I didn't. Um, so hopefully we can recover today. Uh, hopefully you listen to me and set, and didn't play your, your normal volume <laughs> if you went with Archer and Bundy. But, I, I, I mean, it seems like none of the pitchers were really good outside of Hendricks. So maybe I just overthought that one. But, yeah, ton, tons of options today. Pitching, hitting, stat, like there are just – options galore so yeah looking if you, can't, to getting if you can't find a hitter or a pitcher today uh you're probably playing the wrong game because there's a hundred of them oh yeah Alrighty, we need to just get into it because this is gonna be quite the long one. First game up is uh gonna be a popular one too orioles and tigers orioles 4.8 run implied total tigers 4.7 it's a 51 percent chance to win for the orioles uh, Chris Tillman going for Baltimore. I do this every time. Fires, fears, fires. Mike Fires, fires going for Detroit. Yeah. There's something about that name that I don't ever want to say correctly. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Uh, don't play him. Uh, I can I can be confident in saying that. Don't play Chris Tillman either. But play a lot of bats on both sides. What do you think about that? Yeah, I'm not into Fires or Tillman here. And specifically, I want to target against Tillman. So Detroit bats, Candelario, if he's in the lineup, one of my favorite guys in this game. Um, and then Miguel Cabrera and Nick Castellanos. Yeah. Uh, Victor Martinez for 3,300 is at least a little bit interesting. The problem is you have to play him at first base, and I, I'd rather um, – I think there are better options than him today. But Tillman's a guy you can definitely stack against. Just going by his, his XFIP, it's 6.26 against righties and 6.73 against lefties with 56% hard contact. Not so good. he's just, yeah, he's just a terrible pitcher. He just does not have really anything that's going to worry you. Um, the hard contact against righties has been okay, but I still am not scared to, to play really anyone against him at any moment. Yeah, I'm with you there. Uh, Tiger stack looks great. I think an Orioles stack looks great as well. But everybody that you mentioned for the Tigers is somebody that I would be perfectly fine having. Um, you know, Martin should set the table pretty well for Candelario, Cabrera, Castellanos, like, and V-Mart. Uh, I love a Tigers stack because Tillman is just atrocious. One of the worst starting pitchers in baseball. Um, can't get enough of the Tigers, but... I kind of feel the same way about the Orioles. Um, I love Alvarez and Chris Davis today. Uh, Trey Mancini is popping up a lot for me, uh, particularly on FanDuel. Um, a, a Baltimore Orioles FanDuel stack looks amazing. It looks really good on DK too, but some of the bargain pricing, you know, you still get Alvarez at 2300 Chris Davis at 2500 You know, you're still getting Machado. Um, I, like, I'm going to have a lot of this game stack wise orioles one of the spotlight stacks of the day for me yeah orioles definitely in play for me so machado would be my favorite and then after him mancini uh adam jones pedro alvarez if he's up there hitting second so those top four i really like and then chris davis i i just i can't play him he strikes out so so much (laughs) so He's just really tilting. I guess he's only got a hundred or a twenty-five percent strikeout rate against righties this year. That's but not bad. He, no, not for him. <laughs> so maybe he's been a little bit better than I've given him credit for. But he's not even hitting the ball that hard. Like he. So it does I don't know. Me. I, yeah. So I'd probably pass on on Chris Davis and just hope this isn't the game he he gets it together. But yeah, I, I do really like the Orioles stack. Both sides here are very much in play yeah 4.8 run implied total is third as of right now um for the orioles and then the 4.7 for the tigers is fourth so lots of runs to be had in this game 
I, I'll I just want a bunch of it and you should not even accidentally click on one of these two pitchers. <laughs> yeah, I don't think either of the pitchers make sense. No. Um, anybody else in this game that we didn't touch on? I don't think so. Mm, uh, James McCann makes for an okay catcher option sure. for 3400 if you're stacking the Tigers. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. All righty. Pirates and Cardinals. Pirates, four-run implied total. Cardinals, 4.5. Um, it's a 56% chance to win for the Cardinals. Stephen Brault going for Pittsburgh. Miles McCollis going for St. Louis. Uh, my boy Miles comes up every five or six days in one of these videos, and I say that I really like him, and uh, today is going to be no different, particularly on FanDuel where he's 6,700. Nice chance to get a win. Um, I don't... I'm never really nervous about the Pirates. Four-run implied total, nothing special. Uh, I'll have a little bit of McCullis. I don't expect his ownership to be, you know, terribly high just because of how many options there are on the slate, but he's a guy I like. Yeah, I mean, McCullis makes sense. There just are a bunch of guys, I think, for cheaper that I like for... Um, that I like that have better strikeout upside, I think, Yeah. than McCullis here, but... He's more expensive, like, he's... He's cheaper on FanDuel than he is on DK right now. Yeah, I would prefer him. Uh, I'd prefer him significantly on FanDuel. Yeah, that's fair. Um, so I don't think I'll get some McCullis with one lineup. Um, and then I'm sort of scared of these four lefties up at the top of the order. Uh, McCullis has a 32.6 percent line drive percentage against lefties, which isn't great, no. and he's getting hit pretty hard by them. So. Um, Polanco, Frazier, Bell, and Dickerson probably give him a little bit of trouble here, or at least they could. Um, and then I just haven't seen McCullis miss enough bats for my liking. And there are guys around his price that I think have a good chance to miss bats. Yeah, I'm so. with you. I, I, I wouldn't have much of him at all on DraftKings, um, where you know his line is a little bit more important, the win is a little less important. Uh, he fits a little bit better as like a, a pay down option on FanDuel. He's going to be basically not owned, so yeah. um, you don't need to go to a lot of him to be heavier than the field if you wanted to. You know, I mean, that could be 10 out of 150 lines, maybe. Yeah. Um, obviously, no. I have no interest in Brawl. Um, hitters in this game, I, I guess a Cardinal stack is fine, but I'm not really wild about anything here I, I like the cardinal stack um jose martinez against the lefty ozuna against the lefty hitting the ball harder lately tommy fam if he's in the lineup he got pulled early the other day i didn't see why but then he was in the lineup yesterday so i'm, I'm assuming he's all good to go dexter fowler batting fifth is that what you have fowler uh, fifth yeah, yeah fowler fifth fam cut his hand cut his head oh, okay in what does it say? A day after cutting his head while preparing for his second at bat. What? How do you cut your head preparing for an at bat? Uh, the helmet, I guess. Interesting. Well. Oh, uh, yeah, there it is. Fam was injured when he accidentally hit himself in the indoor batting cage while warming up before his second at bat. All right then. Um, well, as long as he doesn't do that again, you should get more than the two at bats. So he should be fine so there. These, these power righties for the Cardinals, I, I do like a lot. Against Brawl, he's got a 14% K rate and 46% hard contact percentage against righties this year. So he's been getting a lot of ground balls, but when ground ball pitchers get lit up, that means they're, they're giving up fly balls. And these Cardinal guys can definitely hit some fly balls that leave the yard. Yeah, I'm surprised they're not grading out better for me here. It must just be a price thing. Um, I'm not expecting to see them a lot. I like them, in theory, more than they're going to show up for me. Okay, yeah. And then do you like any Pittsburgh bats, or are you off them? Because of they look better on DK than they do on FanDuel. They're, they're pretty expensive on FanDuel. Polanco is $100 more expensive. Marte is only $300 cheaper. Josh Bell is more expensive on FanDuel. Dickerson's more expensive on FanDuel, so I wouldn't touch a pirate whatsoever on FanDuel. On DK, if you want to run out, you know, Frazier, Polanco, Bell, Dickerson, 
I think that's fine. And then, you know, Starling Marte is a perfectly acceptable fifth option in that stack. It's not something I would love, but, you know, it's not the worst option in the world. Yeah, that's what I wanted to mention. Just really cheap. All these guys are $3,600 or less. At least the, the four lefties, Marte, is a little bit more expensive yeah. on DK. And, um, like, stacking against McCullis isn't my favorite thing to do, but if you need a really cheap stack, I think the Pirates lefties make a little bit of sense. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. It's just a on a on a fourteen game slate, like it's it's incredibly unsexy to take the pirates. Yeah. Uh, again, and they won't be owned at all. Right. Uh, Nats and D backs. Oh, you're gonna be into this one. Nats three point nine run implied total. Uh, Diamondbacks three point one. It's a fifty nine percent chance to win for the Nats. Steven Strasburg going for Washington, and uh, Jake's boy Zach Godley going for Arizona. I don't think that you can play godly in this scenario. And of the expensive pitchers, I don't really like Strasburg all that much. Yeah, all right. So <laughs> godly just he, – he's like one of my favorite pitchers to play because when he's on and when he his curveball is moving, which it was a lot last year, and a couple starts this year, he's been really, really good and looks unhittable. Um, so – 8,600 here on DK. You're not super worried about getting a win. It would obviously be nice if your pitchers could get a win. But I, I do definitely have interest in him in tournaments. The under four run total for the Nationals is encouraging. If you're just uh, um, looking at Vegas, he's top 15 in whisper swing. Uh, his curveball is getting 46% whisper swing, which is amongst the league lead. And then there are some strikeouts in the Nationals lineup, like... Michael Taylor strikes out a ton against righties. Uh, Weeders isn't that tough. Matt Adams definitely has some power, but he can strike out as well. Zimmerman can strike out. Defoe, and then you get a pitcher spot. I don't know. I mean, Godley is someone that has a ton of talent. So if he's going to be really low-owned here, I'll take a shot on him for 8,600. Yeah, I would expect him to be very low-owned here. Yeah. Um, he's actually, like, him and Strasburg are like next to each other in FanDuel price. Strasburg's at 10-1, and then the next pitcher is Godley at 9-1, or 9,100. Um, yeah, so. yeah, I couldn't touch Godley on FanDuel, particularly as that big of an underdog. I think he makes a little bit more sense on DK, but you don't you don't really need to go to much of him. There's just too much other pitching out there. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. No, there, just, there are a ton of pitchers. So if you just... Godley's a pretty risky play. Anyone is a against the Nationals. Yeah. And you're obviously not looking forward to the a righty matchup against Bryce Harper. No. But I think the rest of the lineup he can navigate pretty well. Yeah. So if he if he can walk Harper or whatever, or, you know, get him to ground out a couple times or even warning track flyouts, uh, those work too. So you just he I don't I don't think he gets blown up here is what I'm trying to say. It's just a matter of whether or not he can K some of these guys towards the bottom of the lineup. Yeah, I mean, 3.9 run implied total for the Nats is giving Godley some respect. Um, yeah. They're not expecting him to get blown up either. Uh, it's just tough to pay that freight. You know, he's actually more expensive on FanDuel than he is on DK, which is rare. Um, yeah. I guess I like the Nats bats a little bit. Uh, like, I think Trey Turner's got a really nice price. Um, you know, Bryce Harper's Bryce Harper. Um same sort of for Matt Adams, 2,100. I can get to a Nats stack, even though I don't really love the game or the matchup, uh, just because I think they're a little discounted right now. Um, Nats stack, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I just have so much respect for Godley. So maybe a Harper one-off, but $5,200 against what I think is a good pitcher is tough for me when – there's so many other bats to pay up for and, and pitching to pay up for. Nah, I'm with you there. Uh, th I don't expect much ownership for anybody on the Nats outside of probably Harper as a one-off guy. Yeah. Do you, So you don't like Strasburg either? Uh, I don't like Strasburg as much as I like the other guys that are slightly ahead of him. <laughs> I guess yeah, like, that's... I don't dislike him. Uh, like I'm not really worried about the Diamondbacks lineup or anything. I just think that there are better options. For me, like... I, I'm hoping to be underweight on Strasburg. 
yeah, that, so just looking at the FanDuel prices that you have pulled up, Strasburg would be really tough for me on D, or uh, on FanDuel when you can just pay $500 more for DeGrom, who I he's probably my favorite pitcher on the slate. Agreed. On DK, uh, I think I like Strasburg a little bit for 10-8. The run total is nice for Arizona. Um, and then, like, you're scared of the righties, so Goldschmidt and Pollock. And then outside of that, like... I mean, Descalso is the goat, but outside of him, which lefties really scare you? Peralta hasn't done much this year. At least he's been pretty quiet if he has. Um, so Strasburg has a 40% K rate against righties, just getting whiffs, swinging strikes, and the price is at a place where I'm pretty comfortable uh, paying for him. Uh, what's the Diamondback swinging strike rate? Ooh, 29th. Okay. Diamondbacks yeah, are 29th in swinging strike rate right now. Yeah, they have been disciplined yeah. as a as a team. Um, Very. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm well, I'm comfortable not having Strasburg, um, and I think that I'll probably be in the minority and wanting to have more Nats bats than less. Okay. I'll, I think I'll end up being higher than the field on the Nats by a little bit, or at least I hope to. I hope to be. They'll be they'll be pretty low owned, so I think. If you just have a little bit of exposure, you're probably going to be over the field. Yeah. Sorry to do that to your boy, Godley. <clears throat> no, no, that's fine. Godley can go seven innings strong and then get 10 strikeouts, and then the Nats can blow up in the eighth and ninth, and then we'll both be happy. Um, no weather concerns in Arizona and Washington. No weather concerns in uh, the Baltimore-Detroit game, but Cardinals and Pirates are looking at a little bit of rain uh, throughout the day particularly around the time of the game, but there shouldn't be any issues with the game happening. I yeah. uh, just wanted to touch on that quick. Missed that when we were scrolling by. Uh, do you have anything else you want to touch on for this game? No, I think that's about it. All righty. I don't want to talk about this next one. It's going to bum me out. Phillies and Braves. Phillies 4.4 run implied total. Braves 3.4. It's a 61% chance to win for the Phillies. Uh, Aaron Nola going for Philadelphia, Julio Tehran going for Atlanta, and I like Nola a lot, and I like the Phillies bats a lot. They're one of my spotlight stacks. If I had the spotlight uh, pitchers article, Aaron Nola would be on it. I like everything about the Phillies tonight, and that bumps me out to a very large degree. Talk to me about Nola. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. you were telling me you liked Julio Tehran before the show, so maybe talk to me about that. <laughs> okay, so I'll, I'll talk about Tehran. Well, first of all, I'll just mention, I think Nola's a good play. 9,300 on DraftKings. Um, definitely some strikeout upside in the bottom of the Braves order, and we've seen them get dominated by good righties. Um, so Tehran has huge splits once again. He's 6,500, but if you just look at his game logs, which I like to do with like the swinging strike rate, 15.6%, um, 16.7%, and 13.3% in his last three games. Uh, those were against the Nats, Phillies, and Mets. So he's done it once against the Phillies, got a bunch of swinging strikes. He's not someone I love playing, but he also is 18th in whisper swing on the season among starting pitchers. So I don't know what is going on with Tehran. Like we were stacking against him, weren't we? Like his first three starts, and yeah. then he's just been pretty good at missing bats. Like hard contact is going to be an issue, especially against these lefties. But I do have some interest in him at sixty five hundred. Yeah, I, I'm all Nola. He'll be prob if I had to guess, one of my two most owned pitchers for the day. Actually, let's see. I ran one hundred fifty lines before. Um, how much Janola is there? Okay, so he's third, just slightly behind Severino. So that makes sense to me. Okay. Um, I just like I don't, I don't like this for the Braves. I like Nola a lot, and it's hard for me to ever get to that point to say that I like a Phillies guy a lot. I generally just hate them out of principle. Um, <laughs> it's I'm just being honest. Uh, I'm a very big uh. I don't want to say I'm a homer for the Braves, but I'm an anti-homer for anything uh, Phillies or Eagles. So if I say that I like Nola, best believe that's a real opinion. Um, I'll have a bunch of him. I'm going to have a bunch of the Phillies hitters. Uh, 
Hernandez, Santana, Herrera, Hoskins, Nick Williams, like that's going to be a pretty popular stack for me. Nick Williams made my spotlight hitters list. He's $2,000 on FanDuel, minimum salary. Um, in a situation where, you know, Tehran has some tr- some trouble with the long ball sometimes, and uh, Nick Williams can take advantage of that. Uh, Santana looks good basically every day that I do this. Mm. Um, Odebel Herrera getting the lefty-righty matchup. I just, uh, you know, the 4.4 run imply total is perfectly fine. Uh, Vegas not expecting much out of the Braves bats, so as much as it pains me to say it, I'm going to have a lot of Philly stacks and a lot of Aaron Nola, and I'm going to cheer against myself. <laughs> yeah, I like I like some of the Phillies hitters, specifically Santana and Williams for cheap yeah. on DK. Um, I don't really want to target righties against Tehran, but yeah, 6,500 for Tehran. If if there was no Luis Castillo and like the mid range wasn't so good or it wasn't so full of options. On DK, I think Tehran would be a guy that I'd probably play for 6,500. But I just don't know if I'm going to need him is is the thing. I don't think I'm going to need him. There, yeah, there's just so many good options, and he he is definitely risky. So I will say, though, he, like just based on what he's done his last few starts, it is pretty impressive. I'll say this much. I ran 100 lines for DraftKings. He didn't come up in one of them. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want. I've never wanted to be wrong more. <laughs> Trust me. I'd much rather see the Braves blow up Nola and me burn mm-hmm. forty of my one hundred and fifty lines. <laughs> um, uh, Braves bats. Uh, you can always use Freddie Freeman in a one-off scenario, but I'm I'm good on anything on the Atlanta side. Just Freeman and Albies for me. That's Although, it. Although Acuna went yard yesterday, so. Yeah. Did you see? Did you see any of the stuff, the the video I tweeted where the dude caught his home run ball and just ran right out of ran the stadium? Ran out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Probably, shit. probably went to go sell it. That's what I. I mean, I would have ran straight to like the office and been like, "Yo, uh, just get me another ball from him and have him sign it and maybe give me tickets to like another game and you can have it." <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't need much. You can give, sign me sign a bat and a ball and we're good to go. Like, yep. <laughs> be dope. I would do the exact same thing. Get a picture with him. For sure. But I, I would just want that video. Like, the video of me running out of the stadium, grabbing a book bag and putting it on, and just, like, into the tunnel, arms above my head. Like, that's better than anything. Anyway, if you haven't seen that, check my Twitter. I retweeted it yesterday. It's amazing. Anything else you want to touch on here? No, I think, I think we covered it. Yeah, agreed. Blue Jays and Rangers... Blue Jays, 4.6 run implied total. Rangers, 3.9. It's a 58% chance to win for the Blue Jays. Marcus Stroman going for Toronto. Mike Miner going for the Rangers. Um, Stroman is, like, comically cheap on FanDuel. Uh, if I needed the salary, I would happily pay down for him. Um, I don't get the sense that on a 14-game slate that's going to be something I need to do. Uh, he's in the middle of the pack with everybody else on DraftKings, in my opinion. Um, I'd like to have like two or three lines with Stroman because I think that he could have a decent day here. But it's just like I can't imagine wanting to only spend six thousand with all of the elite pitching that's going today. Uh, do you have any interest in either of these guys as your second starter? Stroman, yeah. Uh, I think Stroman's probably the biggest boomer bust spot. Yeah. He, he's got a good strikeout matchup against the Rangers with no Beltre, no Andrews. There are a lot of strikeouts in this lineup. A bunch of lefties, which does concern me a little. And then uh, Stroman, out of 159 starting pitchers this year, Stroman has the highest average exit velocity against righties and the ninth highest average exit velocity against lefties. So when he's been hit, he's just been getting crushed, Jesus. which is really, really concerning for guys like Gallo and Mazzara and <laughs> yeah. Chu and Chirinos, who all have power. So Stroman is a guy I'll consider, but I also like Rangers. If you're not going there, if, if Stroman's going to be super chalky, I don't want him here. But if like 
you know, he, you can make a case for both sides. If he's missing bats, he's going to strike out a bunch of guys here and probably go pretty deep and get a bunch of ground balls. If he's not, he's going to get pounded. So this would be one where I wish I had 150 lineups to mess with because then I would get exposure to both sides. Yeah. I'm really surprised at the low Rangers implied total. I don't get that. Yeah. This I game would not have played if you doors, asked me right? what that was before the game or like before I entered them in, I would have said, you know, Rangers are probably in like the 4.3, 4.4 area. To see under four was very surprising. Yeah, maybe Vegas knows something here. And yeah. I don't know. I thought I knew something, and I well, it's very clear that I didn't because I would have thought Stroman was in a little bit more trouble here against the Rangers. There's just so much, like... They're going to go DeShields leading off, then lefty, 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 lefty. That is a tricky thing to navigate if you're Marcus Stroman. Yeah, and the, the, splits. the the Rangers are all um, they're all really cheap on DK. Like, Gal is 4,300, and then everyone else is below 4K. You, Chirinos for 2,900 is nice. I like that. Yeah. At catcher. It's always so weird to me to, like, I never even think about it, the the catcher position, just because of, like, the construction yeah. at FanDuel. Um, okay, let's see. Stroman in his career, 3.6 XFIP versus lefties. That's not as bad as I was expecting. No, and I think he's got a pretty good, is it a changeup that he, that he throws, or a sinker? So it makes sense. He's 38th in whiffs per swing this year for starters, which is pretty good. Um, it's just a matter of whether or not he can miss bats, because if he doesn't, like the ball's been jumping off the bats of yeah. his opponents. Wow, this is crazy. So his home run per fly ball rate versus righties, 16.8%, versus lefties, 11.3%. I would not have expected yeah. that dramatic of a drop in like I would have expected it to be higher. And it's not. That's So oh that's because he's he's probably leaving his sinker up in the zone when he when he leaves it up in the zone to righties. Yeah. Uh, they're just smoking it. Is why I'm guessing righties are getting more homers off of him. Yeah, uh, that's that's just really crazy to me. I wouldn't have expected that. I would have expected him to give up way more long balls against lefties. Maybe that's what, maybe that's what Vegas knows. Maybe that's why the uh, the Rangers implied total is three point nine because they're running out all these lefty bats and Stroman doesn't give up power to lefties. I Could mean, be. obviously the exit velocity has been uh, what what did you say it was seventh or eighth or something like ninth. that? Ninth, yeah, ninth against. Yeah, I had to guess there eventually. I just had to keep saying numbers. Um. I think the Rangers, like, if you wanted to stack up Rangers, they look a little bit better on DK. Um, I kind of like the Blue Jays, particularly on FanDuel. I'm not uh, a big Mike Miner believer. So Steve Pierce at the top of the Blue Jays lineup looks good to me. Uh, Teoscar Hernandez looks good. Uh, I think Kendry Morales looks good. 2,200 on FanDuel. Um you know, I'm not wild about playing Russell Martin on FanDuel, but also 2,200. And I haven't even mentioned their three and four hitters yet. So uh, Blue Jays stack is a stack that I'll probably have a little bit of. I would guess they're going to be slightly popular. Yeah, Blue Jays, I like them quite a bit. Minor is really tough against lefties. Obviously, that lefty-lefty matchup, but not so tough against righties. 40% hard contact. Um... 61% fly ball rate against righties this year, but he hasn't really been blown up. And there's nine righties likely in this lineup for Toronto, so absolutely no minor for me. No. Which is pretty, he's a pretty easy guy to cross off, even for 5,900. And all these Blue Jays are really underpriced on DK. None of them, not one in the lineup right now, is um, above 4K. Solarte is the most expensive at 3,900. So I love um, really one through six. I'd stop at Russell Martin. Sure. Like all those guys. And I prefer Smoke over Morales, but that's just a, a personal preference. And then Steve Pierce leading off for 3,500. They'll, they'll be popular because you can probably fit him in with um, anybody. <laughs> yeah. You can get up to a DeGrom or a Kluwer with a really good SP2 
and then just stack up the Blue Jays, which might be where I end up tonight, but it'll be pretty chalky, I think. Yeah, uh, minor for his career, a full run higher XFIP uh, versus righties compared to lefties. Lefties, Mm -hmm. 3.13, righties, 4.1. So uh, could be a long night, or could be a short night for Mike Miner. I definitely like the Blue Jays. 4.6 run implied total uh, near the top of the list today. Hard to not want at least some exposure to the Blue Jays. And Steve Pierce... 3,000 on FanDuel is a guy that's been popping up a lot for me. Yeah. Uh, Anything else here? No, I think that's good. Okay. Marlins and Rockies. Uh, Marlins 3.8 run implied total. Rockies 4.2. It's a 55% chance to win for the Rockies. Jose Urena uh, going for the Marlins. Tyler Anderson going for Colorado. Um, I guess I'm okay with a little bit of Tyler Anderson, um, particularly on FanDuel. He's uh, really low-priced. I don't see either of these guys as guys that I would want on DraftKings. Um, Marlins have been hot lately. Uh, they, while their hitting stats do not uh, show me a team that's any good, I think they've won six straight. So, I don't know. There's that. <laughs> what do you think about the pitching here? I like Anderson a lot. Okay. Um so last three games, I was just making sure that the Marlins have a retractable roof, which they do. Um, just wanted to, to double check that because there is some some weather concerns. So I'm guessing they'll just close the roof if there's going to be any rain. Um, but Anderson, his last three games, swinging strike rate, 18.1, 18.2, and 13.5. He's 24th in wisp per swing this year. And this is a Marlins team that has given some good pitchers trouble. Like Kershaw a couple nights ago. Yeah. Um, I I don't think they're a good team, and I want to target against them when guys aren't super priced up. And Anderson's been good. He's been missing bats. Who are we really scared of here? Like Real Muto and maybe Starlin Castro against the lefty? Yeah. Uh, um, nope. I mean, the answer to me is no one. Yeah. So I, I like Anderson actually a lot here. He might be my SP2. Love what he's doing late and missing bats and going up against a bad team with a low run total. Yeah, he grades out really well on FanDuel. Um, super low price. Uh, him and uh, Miles McCullough are like two guys in this 6,000 range that you know I want to have a little bit of exposure to. I'm happy to be able to get Tyler Anderson in a game where he's not pitching in cores, so that's always helpful. Um, oh, yeah. I don't have a ton of interest in... I'm surprised the run total is as low as it is, but I think that's just an indictment of how bad the teams are, not necessarily how good the pitching is. Um, I don't have a ton of interest in hitters, although Gerardo Parra looks like a pretty nice option um, for the price. Uh, 2500 on FanDuel, 3200 on DK. I'd, it would be hard for me to get to a Rocky stack, but you know if you get Parra, Blackman, David Dahl... Um, you know, filling that out with Arenado or Story isn't like the worst idea in the world, but 4.2 run implied total. There's just so much else out there to, to like. I don't expect to see a ton of ownership for any part of this game outside of Tyler Anderson. Yeah, just uh, Anderson for me and then uh, Charlie Blackman, but he's 5,300, so it's not the most appealing play. Yeah. Um, yeah pretty that, cheap on FanDuel, actually. 4,300 only. Okay, yeah, that's that's better. I mean, people don't target him as much outside of Coors, of course. Right. Um, yeah, the, not really liking too many bats in this game. I just want to play Tyler Anderson. Yep, I agree. All righty, Red Sox and Rays. I'm excited to talk about this one. Uh, 4.9 run implied total for the Red Sox, 3.9 for the Rays. It's a 60% chance to win uh, for the Red Sox. Drew Pomeranz going for Boston. Blake Snell going for the Rays. Um, I like Pomeranz quite a bit, particularly on FanDuel. Really nice chance to pick up a win. Uh, I don't generally care too much about Rays bats, so I'm, I'm very comfortable having some Pomeranz. He would be the guy that I would want as my starting pitcher, too, on DK. Um, I just like him that much. Uh, what are your thoughts on Pomeranz or Snell? Uh, I like Pomeranz on DK, 7,500. Yeah. Like you said, good chance to pick up a win. The only problem here is the weather. 
and I'm seeing 62% chance of precipitation. Uh, I, so you'll have to track this. Like on a big slate like this, if there's going to be any weather concerns, um, any in-game delay concerns, I'm just probably going to cross off Pomeranz just because there's so many other pitchers that don't have to worry about that, and they're in the same price range, and I think a lot of them can be grouped together. So I think I'd prefer Tyler Anderson over Pomeranz. Okay. But um, if you can't get that extra $200, um, then Pomeranz makes for a nice option if the weather looks good. He had seven Ks in, in three, three and two-thirds innings in his first start. Um, you know, he, he only went four innings, but he did strike out <laughs> seven so there were some good things some bad things in that first start and that's sort of expected with the guy that, that's coming back from an injury um but yeah i, I mean pomeranz makes sense not really looking to target raise bats against him uh so from a weather perspective i see a little bit of rain at seven o'clock but it looks like it clears out by eight uh, okay so you do want to keep an eye on it because it's supposed to be you know major thunderstorms at like five and six so Okay. If that slides later, that could be a problem. But the way that I'm looking at it right now, it seems like they should be fine. Maybe a slight delay to the start, but not necessarily anything they should have to worry about with a game getting stopped. You still want okay. to take, keep an eye on it, though, because there's definitely weather. Yeah. Awesome. Um, now, I need to talk about this one. This is going to be way more important for me than it would be for you. Uh Xander Bogarts looks to be back in the lineup for the Red Sox, slotted in the five hole, and he is minimum salary on FanDuel. So that means you need to have a lot of Xander Bogarts in your life. Um, the Red Sox stack looked fine uh, prior to that. You know, bets against a lefty, Hanley, J.D. Ramirez, now Bogarts, Eduardo Nunez. Um, I would have been in on this regardless. Like, if Bogarts were priced accordingly, I would still probably want to have part of a Red Sox stack. Uh, he's going to be in so many of my lines, it's insane. To get somebody at shortstop at minimum salary that hits, like, you know, a corner outfielder, I, I can't have enough of him. I'm so excited to play him, but he's going to be owned out the ass on FanDuel. Yeah, I mean, it's baseball. If he's going to be, like, 40%, on a on a 14 game slate is that what this is 14 games yeah. so if he's going to be that owned then it makes sense like he could easily go 0 for 4 here and snell's a good pitcher yeah so uh snell's been really good this year and dk is kind of baiting you into trying to play him yeah but um this red Sox lineup is, is really tough i don't see them getting shut down again by a lefty there's there's no reason they should have really by sean Manaya. But Manaya just had his A game and just got to tip your cap sometimes. Oh, you so, don't think they're going to get no hit again? <laughs> I, I don't. That's that's my hot take of the night. If we were doing hot takes of the night, like on the live stream, Holy that shit. would be mine. The Red Sox get a hit. So um, versus lefties this year, weighted runs created plus Red Sox, dead last. Is that right? I don't know how that's right. <laughs> well, yeah, that makes no sense with... I'm, like JD Martinez it over to the bad screen now. I guess Nunez doesn't hit uh, lefties that well, but that seems more like a mirage than than anything. Like it's it's only 210 plate appearances. This is all really early in the season. Mm -hmm. uh, wow, everything on my computer is now minimized. X split is minimized. You're not on the screen any longer. <laughs> nice, nice. All right, now all right. You're, you're back. I'm they've right seen, back. They've seen enough of me the last few days. It's... Um. So, I, you know, generally we don't talk about Woba because it doesn't necessarily correlate uh, perfectly to fantasy stats. Um, Red Sox Woba versus lefties in 200 play, 210 plate appearances, 249. Okay. They've got oh. a 280 slugging and a 267 on base percentage. That, like, I mean, uh, that's just shockingly bad for a team with their offense. Yeah, that doesn't seem like it will be sustainable when you've no. got guys that should smash lefties in your lineup. Yeah. Um, and they're number one, obviously, against right-handed hitting. Yeah. Or right-handed pitching, rather. Yeah, because they scored 15 rounds a game for two weeks straight. Yeah. Oh, my God. I, like, that just, that shocked me <laughs> when I pulled it up. I thought it was, like, I thought I just was looking at the wrong like, chart. <laughs> 
I never would have expected them to be dead last. So, I don't know. Uh, the 4.9 run implied total leads me to believe that uh, Vegas is not necessarily a, be- a believer in their lefty struggles so far, uh, with good reason. I'm going to have a ton of bets. Ramirez, Martinez, Bogarts, Nunez. Um, you know, it's a lefty-lefty matchup, but I'll still have some Benintendi as part of the stacks. Uh, Red Sox are going to be a, a team I have a lot of. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really on the Red Sox as a stack. Snell, is he's been really good. He's missed bats. He's not walking as many guys. Um, no walks in his last two starts, which is really, really nice to see for a guy that struggled with walks. He's struggled his entire career. Um, so maybe he's just turned the corner and... I don't know. I mean, I, I get the Mookie Betts one-off or the J.D. Martinez one-off, especially on DK for 4800 But as a stack, uh, really respect what Snell's done. So I'm probably off the Red Sox in a one-lineup scenario for me. Snell with a 4.56 xFIP against righties in his career. Yeah. He looks like a – he just looks better. Versus lefties. Yeah. He just looks like a much better pitcher this year. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the Red Sox. Although they're probably That's going to fair. be pretty popular, they might be, you know, from a game theory perspective, they might be better off to be. You, you might be better off fading them. But I, don't know. I didn't get so this will be something I want to talk about now. I guess they're not popping up a ton as a stack on Fanduel because Fantasy Cruncher doesn't have Bogarts in part of the player pool yet. So mm. his value. And being able to fill that shortstop position is being left out of this equation when it tries to do the stack. So they're less popular. They'll they'll show up a lot more in my stacks once they get Bogarts added. Yeah. So if people are wondering when I pull that up and it's like, you were talking about how much you like the Red Sox and they're not there. Like, that's why. Bogarts isn't there. And his value at $2,000 at shortstop is going to show up in half of my lines. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, just something to keep in mind there when I talk about it and people inevitably just yell at me in the comments. Um, do you have any interest in raised bats? I assume the answer is no. No. Okay. No. Same. Uh, Indians and Mariners. That's not how you spell Indians. There's definitely not another D in it. <laughs> Indians. I can't even say it. A uh, 4.9 run implied total for the Indians. 3.1 for the Mariners, 69, nice percent chance to win for Cleveland. Corey Kluber uh, heading up against Erasmo Ramirez. Um, obviously, no one's playing Erasmo Ramirez tonight. I love Kluber. He'll be the guy that I have the most of. I don't mind paying the, the freight for it. Um, where do you stand on Kluber uh, compared to all the other top guys? I think Kluber pitches really well here. He's got a good chance to be the highest raw point scorer for pitching. Um, I think I put DeGrom above him for okay. tournaments just because that, that matchup against the Padres. Looking at some of those righties in the in the matchup, and we'll talk about it a little later, but I just think DeGrom has a little bit more strikeout upside. The Mariners are pesky, if you want to call them that. Some lefties that just never strike out. Kluber could easily strike out 10 guys here. I'm not acting like he's going to have any sort of trouble getting through this lineup. But just maybe the strikeout upside isn't as high as DeGrom's. So on DK, I'd rather take the little bit of a discount with DeGrom. Um, sure. But I think DeGrom's also going to be higher owned. So if you're if you're into game theory, then no problem going with Kluber really anytime he pitches. Um. And then Erasmo Ramirez is, is pretty bad with hard contact, 41.2% against lefties, 35% against righties. Cleveland, one of my favorite stacks of the night, if not my favorite. The weather looks good here, right? Uh, no. Okay. It looks better than what I saw last night, so hopefully it's um, trending in the right this direction. This one, I, they should be fine to get the game in, but it might be a delayed start. Okay. So that scares me a little bit for Kluber as well. Um, But assuming this game plays, I love the Indians' bats. Yeah, me too. Lindor, Ramirez, Brantley, Yonder Alonso for 3,800, one of my favorite first base plays. Um, Yeah, just no respect for Erasmo Ramirez. 
he I think he gets pummeled here. Yeah, uh, Indians made the uh, Spotlight Stacks article today. Yeah. They have the 4.9 run implied total, which is neck and neck with the Red Sox. And I think that's exactly how I wrote it, which is fucking weird. Uh, Lindor, Kipnis, Michael Brantley, you know, all getting the benefit of the, the lefty-righty matchup. Um, you know, I like Jose Ramirez regardless. He's a little expensive on FanDuel, but if he's part of a stack, um, I'm, I'm more than okay with it. And I've, I've talked about this a lot, but I just love being able to get a second baseman, a third baseman, and a shortstop in a stack. Really opens up your possibilities for uh, another powerful stack elsewhere mm-hmm. um, to be able to just check off all of those boxes. So uh, I love the Indians today. I love Kluber today. Um, I'll have uh, an overwhelming amount of Indians. Yeah, me too. I just, they're... They're just a really good team, and it's a really bad pitcher. And the numbers support it being a really bad pitcher, Erasmo Ramirez. The Vegas total looks great. Yeah. Um, so I prefer him over the Red Sox, and definitely a top three stack for me. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the only like the Red Sox stack is just so playable on FanDuel because of yeah. the Bogart's price. Oh, options. for sure. Um, but the Indians are just downright a great option. Can't get enough of them. Yep. Uh, Astros and A's. Astros, 4.6 run implied total. A's, 3.7. It's a 59% chance to win for the Astros. Uh, Dallas Keuchel going for Houston. Sean Maniah going for Oakland. We're going to get another no-hitter today? <laughs> no. If he gets another no-hitter today, like, or even if he like dominates Houston... Then we might have to talk about Manaya as one of the best pitchers in the MLB. Cause, Just mowing down righties. <laughs> yeah. Like there's going to be eight righties here for yeah. um, for Houston. And like this is a really, really tough matchup for Manaya. So I'm not playing Manaya here. No. Uh, the run total is not great um, for a pitcher. I don't uh, really like Keuchel either, so. No, I, I don't really like anything in this game, which is weird because I, I usually like the Astros. I think the one bad, if I had to take one, it would be Yuli Gurriel um, for 3700 on DK. Okay. But I'm, I just don't want to target against Manaya. don't really ever want to stack against Dallas Keuchel. He just creates so many ground balls and just sort of eats innings. I'm surprised. I would have expected you to like a bit of an Astros stack here. I mean, I get like... With one lineup, and these guys are sure. If if we were getting a discount on DK with with Springer and Altuve and Correa, and you are with Guriel, but that's about it, then I would consider them for a stack. But I want to pay up for a top pitcher. I want to get in one of these mid tier guys like that I've talked about, Tyler Anderson or or Godley or, or one of these other guys. Um, so I just don't think I'll be able to afford the Astros, and I prefer um, a more expensive stack like the Indians ahead of them. I think that I could probably get to something decent with the Astros, the Indians, and then uh, like, a, like with Nola, or maybe, maybe if I had to go all the way down, maybe like Tyler Anderson. I think they can be a, a fun, powerful lineup. I like Springer a lot tonight. Yeah, uh, I don't. I mean, individually, I have no problems going up against Manaya, but like. No hitting the best team, and you shouldn't just take a one game sample. But he's been really good this entire year. It's not just the no hitter; he's been really hard to hit. I'm just gonna chalk that up to the Red Sox being atrocious against lefties. <laughs> yeah, you could do that too. Um, yeah. I'm calling it now. George Springer lead off home run. Yeah. That's gonna be so wrong. I'm just gonna edit that out when it's uh, <laughs> when it doesn't happen. But I don't know. I just I can see it. I see the future. Uh, I like the Astros a little bit. I won't have much of them. Um, they look a little bit better on DK than they do on FanDuel, and I won't have a single uh, guy from the A's. Okay. And I don't want any of the pitching. This is basically like a no-go game for me. Um, me too. If Springer pops up as like a one-off outfielder, I'm cool with it because I think it's a pretty nice matchup, but I don't expect to have much of it. That's where I'm at too. Twins and Reds. Uh, Twins 4.4 runs, Reds 4.4. For those that don't understand that, that's 
Uh, Minnesota's got Phil Hughes. Reds throwing Luis Castillo. I think Castillo looks really nice, um, particularly on DK as a second starter. Uh, Phil Hughes doesn't look good ever in really any scenario. I probably wouldn't take him in a one-game set. (laughs) Um, Talk to me about Castillo. Yeah, uh, I I mentioned it on the the night shift, but Luis Castillo Day has been not profitable for me this year. It has not (laughs) been fun. But I keep getting baited into playing him, and DK has priced him at a point where I, I don't think it's a great matchup against the Twins as far as strikeouts go. But he does have really, really good strikeout stuff. And if he could somehow get his command together and start missing bats in this start, he could e- he's a guy that could easily get 20 DK points. He's also a guy that could easily get you two in <laughs> in three innings. But like the strikeouts in general for him are going to be there. It's just, can he put together an entire start where he doesn't give up four runs? Um, so you don't need him to be perfect on DK for 6,300. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm sort of lost on what to do with him. Like there is just such a good mid tier. If there wasn't any Tyler Anderson, if there wasn't even Teheran or Pomeranz or all these guys that are within like $1,500 of him, then I'd probably be way higher on Castillo. But right now he's just sort of a um, a guy I don't think I need to get to. But And that sucks because I, I love playing him. Yeah. Um, he's not a guy that I'll end up with, but like in on a shorter slate, uh, he, he'd be somebody that I would want to take a peek at. But I'd rather have McCullis or Tyler Anderson or mm-hmm. Pomerantz. There's just too many guys in that area for it. Now, Red's bats, on the other hand, I think look really tasty particularly on FanDuel, where, much like the Red Sox, Eugenio Suarez, minimum salary. <laughs> yeah, that's that, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, to be able to get... I mentioned it in the Spotlight Hitters. To be able to get Suarez at minimum salary on FanDuel, hitting a spot behind Joey Votto, who's like the most automatic person to be on base at least once in a game mm-hmm. in baseball. Uh, you can't... You can't have a much better table setter than than Joey Votto in front of you. I love a red stack. Um, I'm in for Winker, Peraza, Votto, Suarez. Uh, you know, uh, Scott Schebler, I guess, is you know perfectly fine in the seven spot. Uh, Scooter Jeanette doesn't have the best price. He's a little expensive on Fanduel, but I mean, if he's coming along for the ride in the stack, I'm good. Uh, Phil Hughes is bad. Uh, I expect the Reds to take advantage of that. I'm honestly a little surprised at the line. I'm shocked that it's even. Phil Hughes is really bad, and Castillo is not as bad. Mm -hmm. And has the ability still to be, like, electric. So I don't know what I'm seeing incorrectly here that Vegas is not seeing, but I absolutely love the Reds' bats. Um, Yeah, I just... I think you're going to need a huge score, and... So Suarez uh, for 2K on FanDuel, it's righty righty, but still he's yeah. he's got power and um, for 2K batting fourth, that's pretty stupid against Phil Hughes. It's like the the David Dahl thing on DK the other day with yeah. he was batting cleanup and Coors. Now it's not the same spot. It's he doesn't have the platoon split, but it's Phil Hughes. Um, I think the only guy on DK I, I really like is Vado for 4100. It's just a good price and. He's pretty safe, so yeah, I'm my, not into the stack a ton. My only fear for Suarez is that Votto just, you know, hits two dongs and cleans up everything that's in front of him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hughes is so atrocious. Hughes is pretty bad. What's? That? Wow, that's surprising. Hmm. I figured his ex fit. Well, I guess his career has been pretty long at this point. I kind of just want like the last three years, but anyway. Yeah, I'm going to end up with a lot of reds uh, there in my spotlight stacks. They're going to be one of my uh, more popular stacks, oddly enough. Um, They'll be part of a lot of lineups for me because they're so cheap. Um, It's like Winker, Peraza, Suarez, Duvall, Shebler, all under 3,000. Votto even only at 4,000, which is crazy. He's probably the best overall hitter on the board today. Um 
I'm just going to end up with a lot of reds because of the ability to pay up for like Kluber, DeGrom, Severino. Um, they'll just allow me to fit in basically whatever I want for another stack plus a stud pitcher. So that's why I'm going to end up with a lot of reds, I think. Yeah, I, I definitely get it on FanDuel more than, than DK. Yeah, I mean, that's the same thing I said for the Red Sox. Although, oddly enough, Suarez is in the player pool on FanDuel or on Fantasy Cruncher. So uh, they're going to pop up a lot, and Suarez in particular is popping up a lot because of that crazy discounted price. Uh, Royals and White Sox. Royals 4.6 run implied total. White Sox 4.1. 56% chance to win for the Royals. Danny Duffy going for Kansas City. Ronaldo Lopez going for the White Sox. Um, I guess I'm fine with a little bit of Danny Duffy, but I don't really need any of the pitching in this game. Yeah, I'm not looking at either pitcher in this game. Duffy got clubbed on opening day against the White Sox. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what was going on with him there. Um, Velocity was down, I think, a little bit. And then... He's been better since then, so I, I still like a White Sox stack here. Actually, Wellington Castillo, Castillo batting cleanup for thirty one hundred. Um, Moncada, I don't really want to use against a lefty. Uh, Matt Davidson for thirty five hundred though is a guy that I like, and yeah, Jose Abreu if he's in the lineup as well, forty two hundred. Yeah, Abreu looks pretty nice here. Um, I don't really love a White Sox stack. Moncada hitting six is. That's a bit too low for that price point. Um, I think Tim Anderson. While I, why would you lead him? Why would you lead off with Tim Anderson? Two ninety projected on base percentage. That's terrible. Anyway, gotta, uh, gotta get that strikeout in there. Yeah. Um, I don't have a ton that I like on the White Sox side of this. Uh, I generally am interested in a Royal stack. I, I can't really figure out why I like the Royals as much as I do, but I do. I mean, I guess you know Ronaldo Lopez kind of helps. So I'm fine with, uh, you know, John Jay, Moose Tacos, Duda is a guy that shows up for me constantly. And then, um, you know, if you want to have Salvador Perez as part of a Royal stack on DK, I think that looks nice. Um, I don't expect a Royal stack to be super popular uh, in any way, shape, or form. So that would be a direction I would want to go as a, a unique stack tonight. Do you think they'll have ownership? I, I don't think they'll be very owned. I think they'll be the least owned out of probably the Red Sox and um, the Indians. For sure, they'll be lower owned than them. And yeah. then probably the Blue Jays as well. So I don't think you're going to have to worry about ownership too much with the Royals. Um, the, the two guys that I really like, and I always like them against righties, are Moustakis and Duda. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I don't see the Royal stack that much. I guess I'm just sort of have a mental block of playing Whit Merrifield and and John Jay at the top of the lineup. <laughs> but three, three, four, five look pretty good to me. Moustakas, Perez, and Duda. Yeah. Even Soler, only 3,000 on DK. That's not bad for a guy that can drive the ball. You know, you'd prefer it to be against the lefty. Yeah. But... Right, I'm going to – I will probably be higher than the field on the Royals. I'm fine with that. But it's not going to take much to do that either. Right. Not a lot of hitting in these next couple games. Angels and Yankees. Uh, Angels, 3.4 run implied total. Yankees, 4.3. It's a 60% chance to win for the Yankees. Andrew Heaney going for the Angels. Luis Severino going for the Yankees. Um, I like Severino a lot. He would probably be my my main starter on DraftKings. And uh, he'll be the second guy behind Kluber for me. Uh, just a really nice chance to pick up a win. Um, you know, Angels run really heavy righties at the top of the order. I think that plays into Severino perfectly. Uh, I, I can't get enough of Severino here. I hope that I have more than the field. Uh, I'm not really on Severino that much. The The run total looks good, but I just think it's a strikeout thing for me. The Angels are very disciplined, as we've talked about, one of the lowest swinging strike rates in the entire MLB. Um but Severino, he's been really good. Like, I, I can't argue against playing him at low ownership here. He's a guy that um, has a ton of upside just in general. So even in a tough matchup, I don't mind using him. Um, and then Heaney, this is a really bad spot for Heaney, but he's 
he's been really good against righties in terms of limiting hard hit balls out of 159 starters uh, with 10 batted ball events he ranks 157th in average exit velocity so he's got an 82.0 miles per hour average exit velocity against righties and that's really really good and I wasn't expecting to see that um, like I'm not playing Heaney but maybe I just don't want to like full stack against him and I thought I was going to want to but like you can take a Stan or Judge or a Gary Sanchez I think are all fine individual plays but maybe not all of them um, I love Stanton a lot here. Here's some yeah. Heaney stats versus lefties versus righties. Heaney versus lefties. Uh, home run for, per fly ball, 5.1%. That's crazy low. Yeah. Hard contact, 27%. Versus righties, 17.8% home run per fly ball rate, 38% hard contact. Righties mash the shit out of him. <laughs> they should, uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't it's, know. I don't know why the average exit velocity isn't higher though. Uh, home runs per nine versus righties, two point two. <laughs> no one like lefties just don't hit a ball out of the ballpark against him. Righties mm-hmm. do it a lot. That's not a great recipe when three of the guys that you have to face are Judge, Stanton, and Sanchez. One of those guys is taking him yard. I think yeah. I think that's a pretty safe bet. Like, like I don't think Heaney escapes this game and goes six innings and doesn't allow a run. He probably gives up a home run or two. Um, but he has been decent at limiting the hard hit balls, which is a little bit concerning for the Yankees stack. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't necessarily love a Yankee stack uh, from a price perspective. They're pretty expensive outside of mm-hmm. Stanton. Uh, I think Stanton kind of transcends it a bit, but I would not want to pay 5,100 for Aaron judge on FanDuel. Um, I would much rather take Stanton there. And uh, if I had like a one-off catcher spot on FanDuel, I'd be a little bit more likely to have a Yankee stack because of Sanchez. He's still good in that uh, in the catcher first base role, but it's hard for me to get there on a Yankee stack with you know the low-ish implied total and uh, that many good bats that are out there today. But damn, if you uh, if you want to grab one of Judge Stanton or Sanchez, uh, somebody's going yard in that group for sure. Uh, he yeah. just can't help himself. Yeah, I think Sanchez is the best chance to do it out of those guys, actually. I'll take Stan. Okay. So it'll be Judge. Yeah. <laughs> Judge double down. It'll be Gliber Torres. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All righty. Padres and Mets. Padres, 3.3 run implied total. Mets, 4. It's a 59% chance to win for the Mets. Clayton Richard going for San Diego. Jake DeGrom going for the Mets. Uh, I like DeGrom here. Um, you know, op- uh, that should be relatively obvious, but for me, he's my third option of all of the top starters. I would put him behind Kluber and behind Severino, um, you know, just because I have to. Doesn't mean I don't like DeGrom. He's just not the guy that's popping up for me as much. Um, you love DeGrom, though. Yeah, DeGrom would be the guy I want to pay up for most on DK. He's just been really awesome his last two starts. He yeah. had a game with, a, I think, 22% swinging strike rate. So I'm just pulling it up right now. Yeah, 22.3 two games ago against the Nationals, which is absurd. And then 14.4 last game. Whiffs look great. Um, 12-4 against the Padres. I'm hoping... Cordero's in the lineup. That's a free couple of strikeouts. Um, there's he's gonna start with four out of five righties. Is that what you have as well? Yeah, Margot Myers, uh, Perella, and Villanueva. Yeah, and I'm like against a, a power righty like Degrom. Like, just give me that matchup for Degrom. I think he can strike out a bunch of guys here, and he's 12-4. You get a little bit of a discount from Kluber. You don't have to worry about any weather. Um, so DeGrom, he's my number one guy. Uh, I just hope I can afford him. Uh, Padres, second highest swing strike rate in the league this year. Uh, so yeah. if you are also on the DeGrom wagon, uh, that's, a, that's a point in the DeGrom column for sure. Uh, I don't want any hitters in this game. Um, like, probably at all. <laughs> okay. 
yeah, I mean, Cespedes or Estrubal Cabrera, maybe a Wilmer Flores, but I'm not in love with a Mets stack by any means, even though it is Clayton Richard. Uh, yeah, they're just, they're just sort of there for me. I, I don't have a strong opinion on the Mets stack. I try not to get too many bats in San Diego. Mm-hmm. Um, Mets implied total is only four. So while they're expected to win, it's not like they're going to do it with their offense. They're priced a bit better on DK. Uh, they're just not guys that I can get to on FanDuel. Right. And then I definitely don't want any Padres. <laughs> <laughs> Last game. Giants and Dodgers. Giants, 3.7 run implied total. Dodgers, 4.3. It's a 56% chance to win for the Dodgers. Derek Holland going for San Francisco. Hunjin Ryu going for the Dodgers. Uh, I absolutely hate Ryu on DraftKings. He's significantly more palatable on FanDuel. $7,800 on FanDuel. $11,100 on DraftKings. You can't have him on DraftKings. Not with all these other guys. He'll basically not be owned. Um, but I'll, I'd be okay with a little bit of him on FanDuel. There's just I'd rather have Nola for six hundred dollars more. Um, yeah, I assume I, you're not touching Ryu at all here. Yeah, I don't understand that price at all really on DK. Bad. That it just seems like a misprice. Like he's like two thousand dollars overpriced. I think he should be priced um, like Dallas Keuchel today. Yeah, yeah, agreed. So I don't know what DK is trying to do here. Uh, I don't really want bats in San Francisco. I don't want to target against Ryu. Um, I'd like to target against Derek Holland, but um, he's been really, really good against lefties. I read this stat off yesterday. So he's, he's made four starts this year, um, 0% hard contact against lefties. So that sort of what? takes me off. The, yeah, 0%. On, so going by fan graphs. So he's not had a hard hit ball, according to fan graphs, against the lefty. And maybe he hasn't faced a bunch of them. But still, like, That's four starts in. And like Comically, well, like, it's just a zero. Is crazy. Yeah. Um, he's so due. I don't know. Yeah, he, he's due. Like, But uh, Kike Hernandez for 3,500 against the lefty is always going to be appealing to me. Yeah. So that's probably my favorite bat in this game. If I had to take one bat, it would be him. Okay. Um, I don't love a Dodgers stack, especially how their lineup looks like it's going to be constructed with those two lefties, uh, second and fourth, um, and then maybe Austin Barnes for 3000 But it's really Kike and not in love with much else. Yeah. Um, I like Kemp a little bit on FanDuel. He's only 2700 I think that's a, a nice price. Uh, same for me and uh, Kike Hernandez, 2700 on FanDuel. I like that. Dodger snack could be a snack. Dodger snack, snack, yeah. A Dodger snack could be a little sneaky. I was about to say sneaky, so I crossed myself over there. Um, I'd, I'd be okay with it. I don't really love the idea of stacking here, but you can get enough nice righty bats. And uh, from what I'm seeing right now, 15 mile an hour winds blowing straight out to center field um, could be a little helpful for some of those righty guys. So. Uh, I'd be like mildly okay with Ryu on FanDuel. You can't touch him at all on DK. A um, little bit of Dodgers bats, no Giants bats. That's basically like the summary of this for me. Yeah, it's just in this park. There, I don't think it makes sense to stack on a 14-game slate unless it's like the Yankees or someone, a team that can hit you know four or five home runs in a huge park. Yeah, I don't think the Dodgers can really do that, and the Dodgers have been awful. Like, true, they've been really, really bad. So definitely not looking to stack them up here. Yeah, Dodgers are eleven and twelve right now. Yeah, they maybe they're just not a good team. I don't know. What's their chances of making the playoffs right now? Uh, Holy shit! Eighty-five. <laughs> Didn't expect that to be slightly lower. They should be good, but they definitely have not been this year. No, not at all. They haven't been hitting. Yeah. So these are the the stacks and stuff for everything that I ran on FanDuel. 
Again, I expect Boston to climb up this once uh, Fantasy Cruncher gets Bogarts added to the player pool. But lots of Kluber. Uh, the main stacks for me, Baltimore, um, Cleveland, uh, the Reds, and the Phillies. Uh, we'll take a look at DK since I trust that a little bit more. And with uh, Bogart's price not being all wonky, um, this will look a little cleaner. Lots of Severino, mm. Nola, Kluber. Uh, more Strasburg than DeGrom, which is a little surprising to me. Um, but major stacks for DraftKings, uh, similar to FanDuel, Orioles, Phillies, uh, and Indians. So if you were p- looking for two pitchers right out of the gate, Give me two names. We'll see if there's any lines with them. Um, try Degrom and try Degrom and Tyler Anderson. Let's see. None of them in the they... top hundred. So. Okay. But. Good. Good to hear. Good to hear. I mean, that doesn't. That also doesn't surprise me. There's so many options that like. It's naturally going to be, you know, a lot of unique combinations. So let's grab. What is this sorted by? Jesus. Uh, DeGrom and Tyler Anderson will crank out 20 and we'll see what we get. Yeah, you can literally make a case for like 10, 12 pitchers in tournaments tonight. So I wouldn't worry too much about ownership. I think DeGrom will probably be the highest owned pitcher. Yeah. Um, but like, I don't think anybody gets over like 30%. And definitely these cheap guys. Like, I think Tyler Anderson and um, Stroman and uh, godly, these guys are all going to be not that owned because they're going to um, take ownership away from each other. Pomeranz, too. So, the big stacks with DeGrom and Anderson would be Rockies, Orioles. Oh, I don't like that. Um, what about Rockies, he... Reds? <laughs> Rockies, Reds. Uh, lots, of, lots of Rockies um, coming in here. Man, that's – I don't like the Rockies as a stack, so um, I, it's really just Blackman for me, so I don't like that as much. Maybe that pair, Maybe I'll have to get away from that pairing and go with the two mid-tier guys like Anderson and Godley um, and just hope none of the top guys just go off for 40 points. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I mean – you're going to need a lot of production out of your pitchers tonight. There's going to be two guys that probably score 70 combined. So I think Anderson has a lot of upside. I think Godley has some upside. I think Pomeranz has some upside, um, but maybe not as much as like a DeGrom or Kluber. So if you can find the bats to make it up, like just take two of the mid-tier guys and pay up for bats. But there are a ton of ways to go tonight. Yeah, if you don't want to bring uh, the Rockies and Mets along for the ride, you can do Astros Orioles with Anderson and DeGrom, and I think that's a Ooh. pretty interesting stack. Yeah, I like that much better. Um, Indians Reds would be a direction I would go on DK that I think would be pretty popular. Um, yeah. Indians Blue Jays is something I would like a lot. Oh, yeah. Miss Ramirez, Lindor, Bradley Zimmer, which wouldn't be my favorite play, but Pierce, Hernandez, Morales, and Martin. Um, I really like that. Yeah. <clears throat> so I, I love the idea of stacking against Erasmo Ramirez. So. Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, it's not it's not hard to want to get uh, against Erasmo Ramirez, that's for sure. Yeah. All righty. Do we have anything else to plug? What's what's the hockey sitch tonight? There's just one game. It should be a really fun game. Uh, I'll probably have a showdown article out this morning just for fun. Um, but it will, it'll be a good read. Maybe try out the showdown slate. Be a degenerate like me <laughs> and play play one game slates. I don't I don't know how it's not considered gambling, but. Um, <laughs> That's not really my problem, so I'll just keep trying to make money off of it. I don't blame you. Three games for the NBA tonight, all big uh, game sixes. So NBA is going to be pretty interesting. Um, any quick NFL draft thoughts? No, I I mean, I watched it. I just like watching people get upset about it. I love the NFL, but I I don't love it in April. Yeah, so, agreed. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, I didn't have anything interesting. I'm very surprised. I'm shocked that Mayfield is the first pick in the draft. I have yeah. a feeling that the Browns are going to be the Browns for that one. But best of luck to him. You know, I don't. I want everybody to succeed. It's his livelihood. So. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't. I don't get why people want people to fail just because yeah. he whatever he grabbed his like nuts. Like who cares? <laughs> right. You know. He's, yeah, I, he's well, a college kid. Like if I if I was doing that a couple years ago. I wouldn't want to be scrutinized. I've probably done way worse stuff than that. It's just not on camera. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I would not have been the model person um, if people were critiquing my collegiate life. <laughs> yeah, no one is. And made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> yeah. He's 22, 23. He, yeah, so he – give the kid a break. Let him let him get in the league and see if he can play. Then, then judge him. Yeah. That's that's where I'm at with all these guys. Like, no one knows how these guys are gonna be. So, whatever. Completely agree. Alrighty, guys, that is it. Uh, check us out on Twitter at Jake Hari, at Josh Engelman, at Osmo underscore com. Uh, Osmo dot com will have all of the the articles for you, including Osmo's rankings himself. Uh, like and subscribe on this video and the and the. Um, the channel itself uh, growth has been great guys and it's all thanks to you so best of luck today and uh yeah that's it go Good luck, watch guys. nba tonight too <laughs>